I was trying to come up with some kind of an analogy, Razor, to what we witnessed, what we experienced today, today being July 28th, 2021. This year known as the NHL Free Agent Frenzy Day. And I couldn't really come up with anything. The one thing that kind of kept coming back into my head, bud, was, you know, you ever go to that house or, or, or you're involved in like a, in a remodel of a house? It's not a complete teardown, but it's a remodel of a house. And there's a bunch of different paints on the wall or there's a bunch of different this, that. And then finally you get done with it. And you're not sure if the house is better or more efficient, but it looks pretty cool and it's a lot different. But you're walking around and you're saying, I don't know if this is better. And I don't mean that just for the Boston Bruins, Razor. I mean that for a lot of teams around the NHL. And as we welcome you to Morning Brew with Jaffe and Razor, special edition free agent frenzy episode. I don't know how to describe what we saw because it wasn't a feeding frenzy. I mean, it was it was massive. It was it, it was it was crazy, yet I just don't know how many teams are truly better off. I mean, this is truly a time will tell scenario now. This is a yeah, we'll we'll find out December, January, where where all these teams ended up and, and how they ended up and what moves were were good and what weren't. And and yeah, to your point of the the feeding frenzy, typically this we see 10 Dougie Hamilton deals and you feel like you can parse through those and find the three good ones, the four bad ones and the three. ah, I'm not really sure this year. There was one Dougie Hamilton deal and a million other ones (laughs) that are on the fence that can go both ways. That can be that, that really rely on the piece that they signed as well. Not just the, the Nick Foligno, but the Nick Foligno and Hall, the Nosek, the the Riley and the Fob like that's it how that all mixes together. It's not just one piece sliding into these teams. It's it's six or seven of them. And did the GMs put the right six and seven pieces together with their team? So it was uh definitely a much different day than we've seen the last few years. Maybe the better analogy as I sit and listen to you talk about it, but is you're in the kitchen. And sometimes you ever been in the kitchen with one of your little kids, especially, and they, 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 all of a sudden they just take a bowl and they throw so much, they throw ice cream, they throw this, they throw that in there and they think it's going to be the most delicious thing. And, and, and it's usually always all sweet stuff, right? It's all sweet stuff. Right? And, mm-hmm. and when you're done, you know, they put it in the freezer and they're all proud. And I don't know about you, but I used to, every once in a while I'd go kind of taste it you know when they didn't realize you know just because i got such a sweet tooth (laughs) and i would taste it and sometimes i'd be like yeah you know god that is awful and other times i was like okay this is pretty good maybe that's what it is and the bowls looks exactly the same right they they both look if they put them back beside each other they look exactly the same one tastes good one doesn't and uh, again, we're not going to know what what these t- a lot of these teams taste like until November, December. And even then, we may not even know if only because November, December is early on in the season, <laughs> and we don't really know how not just people's uh, what, what what's their longevity going to be. You know, coming out of the gate feeling really good about coaching your new team is one thing; being able to sustain it when the games get harder is another. So. I'm going to assume that our fans know that that listen to Morning Brew with Jaffe and Razor here, what the Bruins did. But I, I'm, I've been in this business long enough that it's still worth going over quickly. All the deals, free agent deals, in no particular order. You mentioned Thomas Noshek. No sec, no check. We'll have to get the right spell uh, uh, uh pr- correct pronunciation but no sec two years 1.75 average per year nick felino two years 3.8 linus ulmark some might call him linus i think it's linus linus ulmark four years five million a year eric howla two years at 2.375 Derek forbert three years at three and mike riley 
three years at three. Riley being the returning player, as every good Bruin fans know. Now, the Bruins also made a trade. And Dan Vladar gets traded near the end of the frenzy day to the Calgary Flames for a third-round pick. Let's, uh, I mean, we've got so much to cover. Let's get right into the goaltending situation. We could spend an entire 30 minutes on this. I know we're not going to, mm. but. Um, yeah. All right. Your thoughts, first of all, on Linus Ulmark. Um, I will tell you this. I do think there's good potential there with him at 27 years old. I do think it is a very much uh, a, a little bit of an overpay, but yet I think that's what happened, you know, near the end of the day. And, and, and you had to do that. Um, but I also, I, I, I'm curious to see Razor, how he plays for a team that isn't gong show central and might not be the most defensively stout team in the league, but will be significantly better than what he saw with the Buffalo Sabres. There's no question about that. And, and, and exactly this, the system, the Bruins play goalie, Bob being able to, to mentor and tutor him and, and get him up to speed on how that system plays. How's the best way to get into position with that big body of his, I, I, I love the play. I think he's the, for what, listen, the Bruins were in a tough spot because they couldn't go with a Holtby or a I Bernier agree. or a, you know, a few of the, you know, I, I we talked two days ago. I, I liked Freddie Anderson. I didn't mind that spot, but, and Mrazek, and those two guys flip flop for the same place. And those were similar situations as the Bruins in that they needed a number one guy. And I think Allmark was right at the top of the list for that need. Um, Swayman's a great Swayman's going to be good. Swayman's getting ready to be good, but he hasn't even had a full season. He hasn't had a pro. Nope. I've been emboldened by that. Talking to a few of the NHL goalie coaches the last week and a half that listen, he, he's got talent, but he's not there. He's not that no one throughout the league doesn't expect him to go on a tear and take play 50 games. They think mm -hmm. he needs to fail still. They think he needs still to get ready. So all marks a great play. I think they had to overpay maybe a little bit, give him an extra year longer than Buffalo would have because of that. It came down to him in Buffalo and, and, and Bruins in Buffalo and, and the Bruins needed him compared to what else was out there. They weren't going to go out and get Kemper. You saw they had to give up a first round pick and a seventh defenseman and still pay that three and a half, four million dollars a year. Mm -hmm. So the reality was the Bruins, you know, had to pay a little, but I love the play. I think Allmark's more than capable and more than ready to take on more. And especially on a good team, like you said, like the Bruins. I think I think he'll be a, a real good player for them. I I do like the move. I do. I, I do. I, you know, I mean, uh, you know, what I I guess selfishly from a hockey fan perspective even though you know you know as a broadcaster it's you know we've always talked about that you, you want him to do well etc but i i would would have loved to have seen in the four to four to five range but you had to pay more you had to give him a little, about a million more years you said i mean to get him and uh, the four years at, at 27 years old he's just finding his his wings right now. His learn he's learning to fly mm -hmm. right now in the NHL. This is when I'm not telling you what you know much better than I ever could, but from being in the league a long time, 26, 27, 28 is just that time when a goalie learns to fly. It just is. Yeah, you, you start know? to figure it out. Yeah, you start to figure it out. And, 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 and so, the Bruins are a team where you can figure it out even quicker behind them. So. I, again, I, I like it too. Um, with Vladar being traded, I didn't mind the trade selfishly again. Would I have loved the second round pick? I don't know if they could have. You know, that would have been if a team was really more desperate. I mean, he's looked upon Vladar as a backup goalie. So a third round pick is fair. If they got anything less than a third, I would not be happy. I, I, I wouldn't have been happy for that. But they got a third. So I'm like, okay, I can, I can tolerate that. I hate to see him go. But I think it's good for him too, you know. Now we're gonna find yeah. out what his is too. Um, yeah. So now, okay. Well, what happens if Tukarask shines through this rehab, 
and the hip is good. I mean, are you, you know, I'm Don Sweeney and his presser in the evening was very like, well, you know, if he's able to come back, basically he can come back. And then there's always that option, obviously, to sell a uh, send Swayman to the American League. Um, are, is that just something you'll deal with when the time comes? Is that yep. what it, is that what you do? That, that's that's my read. That's been my read all week is that we this this team this organization is ready to win now and if Tuca's a part of that in february great if he isn't it, we're not planning for that we're not we're not waiting and we're not going to sit on our on our hands and, and hope that everything goes well and then he comes back perfectly i think it's a it's going to be a a complete wait and see how february comes and and what it looks like and if we need them, great. If we don't need them, we're we, you know we're going to be prepared for both of those scenarios. So I, I really believe they've they've looked past that and know that they need to be come February they need to be thirty and ten in the standings to be where they you know want to be in in that division. Would you guess that they've talked to Tuca or his camp and said, "Listen, man, you know you're Tuca, but this is biz, and and we're not saying we don't want you." But we're saying that right now we can't rely on it, and therefore we're doing. I mean, Tuca's a bright guy; he knows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I'm sure Tuca doesn't want the responsibility or having to push his rehab to be back on a certain date too. I don't get the sense that he's in that position in his career, in his life, where he wants to say, "All right, I'm going to sign this deal on February one. I'm going to do everything I absolutely have to do. I'm going to kill myself to get there on February one." If it if it takes Tuca to February 28th, if it takes him to March 28th, I think that's how long it's going to take him. And I don't think he wants the responsibility of being under that thumb as well. So I think that takes the pressure off of all of that with this signing. Uh, quick quick scouting report, if you have one, on, on Lena Sulmark. I, I've watched him a bit. He's a big kid. My, you know, my forwards view of him, big guy, has uh, good net coverage has at time been holy, uh, at, you know, at times with some of his movements. Uh, what I've found that for a big guy, the pucks have beaten him that way. But I've also found him to be uh, physically involved, meaning he's, he's, he's not afraid. I think his size helps him in that regard. Uh, and and, and I've, I've found him to be strong mentally. I, I have. He said, you know, he had nine wins this past year, and the whole rest of like twelve other goalies on that team had, mm -hmm. I think it was six. It was six combined on that team. So yeah. he had nine seventeen save percentage. So that's my layman's view of him. What about your your eagle eye expert view on? No, him? he's 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 a he's a modern day. He's a great big athletic goalie, and he was playing in a system that didn't have a system. I think he'll benefit from especially having, under Ralph Kruger. He, he, he they, they just it was didn't. it was helter skelter, and right. and I think he'll benefit from knowing where the shots coming from, where it's going to go. To your point on the holy stuff, I, I think there's some things his net play at times has been leaky uh, against the Bruins. There's a few that have yep exactly a from down low on him. Um, sometimes that comes with being a bigger goalie. He's very similar to Jacob Markstrom. I I. I I, okay. I can see him following that path. Very, very similar guys. Big, tall Swedish guys that move really well, that can over move at times. And again, if goalie Bob can tighten him up just a little bit, get him moving a little bit less, doing a little bit less, he's going to be able to take another step in his development. But um, he's got all the tools. And to your point, he, he's been mentally tough to be able to play on that team the last two mm -hmm. years and still grind and still – work through the injuries he's had and still come out and be competing. That's that tells me a lot about him. Um, and, and like I just said, the injuries, I, I got to imagine playing in a better system will keep him from being injured as well. Boy, I hope so. I hope. Yeah, that, he is, it, 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 that's a whole nother. <laughs> that's like, we're, we're going to, you know, we'll, we'll touch on Carlo. That's the same thing. Like the Bruins have seemed to on the back end and maybe we'll segue into that by the looks of the free agent window we just had. Brandon Carlo is going to be healthy for 82 games. Brandon Carlo is coming back to where he was before. We don't need a shut another shutdown defenseman to that level. We have Brandon Carlo. That's what I read into that. Yeah. So, in your opinion, was Lena Sulmark not just financially, because I can answer that question myself, but was that optically and and just from a an importance level the biggest move of the day by the Bruins, in your yep. opinion? Was yeah, it even sure. close? Was it even close with any of the other guys? 
No, I don't think so. I, I, you know, we saw the direction. We knew they had to build up their third and fourth lines, especially the fourth line, and I, they certainly did that. But, but no, quite like they needed a goalie. <laughs> mm-hmm. They really did, and I think that you know, I know the Swayman talk. I get it. I, I know yeah, the we're... excitement around them, but they needed a real goalie mm-hmm. to play games in the NHL for this team that wants to win now. It, it, they're not in a they're not in a situation where they could have a goaltending question up in the air come september october and the swayman vladar thing that just was never going to happen and it, it wasn't easy to go and get the guy so good on management to go and get allmark because like i said i think he was right at the top of the list for a team like the bruins who needed a number one yeah i think some fans love the move i think others are skeptical given the contract but i go to the i go to the term it's four years i mean I'm fine with that. And that was a common theme for the most part today, that most deals were two, three, some four years, but mostly two and three year deals, which Mm -hmm. I I think that also encouraged a lot of these general managers to make all these multiple moves. It kept being, well, it's only two years. It's two years. It's, it's, that's it type of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, So defense, listen, I mean, I'm not going to break down the minutia of every position, but they bring in, forward they re-sign mike riley so now grizzlick riley forbert are your third left your three left d mcavoy carlo cliffy are your three right d on paper i'm guessing zaboral's ahead of vakanainen that's it right now am i forgetting anybody on the depth chart am I, oh john moore but he's on long term still mm-hmm. he's on long term I'd heard somebody actually may have inquired about his contract, but you can't move him when he's on long term. And any, anyway, um, is that enough? I I don't know if it is, Razor. I don't know if it is if you're talking about a playoff run. Now, I know you first got to crawl before you walk, walk before you run. But the Bruins aren't looking to crawl for a long time. They're looking to walk and get into a jog pretty quickly, to your point about win now. I don't think they have to win the division, but I do think that they're, I, I just don't, I can't imagine, bud, that they're done on their back end. I just can't, that, that there's not one, at least attempt to make one more move. No, I agree. And it's, it's on the defensive side. And again, I, you look at it. All right. You know, you, they expect a whole lot more out of Carlo. I just talked about that. They expect Charlie McAvoy to take another step. They, you can make all these assumptions, but you, you just look at, and listen, this kid from like, he's a, he, whatever he's listed, he always looks bigger on the ice. You watch the Ooh. West coast game. Ooh, forward. Forward. Yeah, yeah. He, he looks like a monster out on the ice and he covers a lot of ice. He covers, a lot, but the reality is he's not in that. He's not Victor Hedman. <laughs> right. And, um, he, he, we, we, we talked about it the last show. That was where I thought they were going to go heavy, and they didn't go heavy this 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 day, these last couple of days. And and yes, so long winded answer. I, I do think they've got more way, a lot more to go on that back end, and it's not easy. The guys aren't out there. They aren't out there, which leads me to believe that it has to be via trade. But then you look at the roster, and you say, "Well, wait, you got you got a guy at three million or two guys at three million. Are you going to really sit one of those guys? Are you really going to sit a $3 million guy? Now, they did have John Moore as their extra. They signed him originally to be their original six guy and were willing to pay him, what, 275 for the term of the five-year term. So, I mean, maybe they are comfortable. Maybe it turns out, Razor, they are saying, well, you know, it's going to be a battle. But you got those guys signed for each three years. Grizzlick has, what, one, two years left? It is four and a half or so plus. But I don't know, man. I, I I watch these playoffs, even the Montreal Canadiens. No, I know. No, Montreal Canadiens. I mean, there's a reason they're in the final. They had the four biggest the defensemen four big boys, right? going. They were bigger than they were bigger than Tampa. Those top four guys they had there, and and yeah, we. It seems like it's important. I again, I I go back to Carlo playing like he did against the Toronto Maple Leafs in '19. Maybe they they expect that to happen on a consistent basis. They uh-huh. they expect Forbear to take a step on that defensive side. And those are the shutdown guys in a two, one game. You throw those guys yeah. out in the ice for 10 minutes in the third. And you, you know, maybe that's the, the plan early on anyways. 
Well, Forbert, Riley, both get paid. Um, I think they both ended up, obviously knowing Mike Riley a lot more, having seen him the last two months or so of the season. I, I you know, I think they both get what uh, what they would have gotten even on the open. Well, obviously, Forbert got it on the open market. Riley, I'm guessing that would have been the max too that he got. Everyone's getting three million dollars on the back end today. Everybody right. got three million dollars. I mean, Cody sees he's getting five years from Edmund. Like there were, everyone was yeah. getting that money. Yeah, because there weren't guys out there. Right. So they get that money, but I, 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 I actually think. Riley would have gotten that from another team too, if he decided. But yeah. I think he says, you know, I love it. Boston yeah. had a great time. He needs to step up, and I mean that. Look, I was happy with him. I, I thought he, I thought, you know, look, starting with DJ Smith in Ottawa, really kind of pushing him, helping him get going this year and confident, and then Bruce and Kevin Dean and the rest of the guys and being around this environment. That's good. But he's this is you know big step year for him. Forbert, we're going to have to see. We know that he's. When I say he's a third pair guy, there are going to be some games that he's playing maybe num- maybe top pair minutes because of penalty kill and shutdown type thing or matchup type thing. But my guess is he's 18 to 22 minutes a night. Yep. And you know, and you hope that you hope that he has found his sweet spot as an NHLer too. That's what you that's what you hope. Yep. And if you want to look glass full, I, I would I would suggest that he's an upgrade from Lausanne at this moment. This not in the talking about upside or where Lausanne can, but I would say from the end of the season till now, that would be an upgrade considered. If you want to look at a half glass full. You know, I'll thoroughly admit I know Derek Forbert. I know who he is. I know he was one of those 2010 draft players, et cetera, et cetera. I don't know his game well enough to say that yet. I'm not sure. I, 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 sh- I, I'm going to think, I'm going to say, I think so too, but I really wouldn't know. Like knowing the little yeah. subtleties to his game, does he turn it over in a certain, like killing the penalty? He might block the shot, but does he kick it Can out? Can he clear it? Yeah. Right. No, I don't, I don't know those details either. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. But, so um, that's what I'm going to say. Um, all right. Forwards. What do you think of the forwards ads? Well, I mean, <laughs> I mean, how's that for a lead? And so you, so the Howla and Nosek, neither of them surprised me in the sense of like, okay, you know, you look at their names. The Felino one caught me a bit by surprise. But again, I look at that, and now I'm trying to do the the, the line chart, the, yeah. the jigsaw puzzle of that. Where do they all fit? I felt I had the the line chart down real well when it was Krejci and not Felino, and now mm-hmm. I'm confused. <laughs> now I'm confused. I, I think – well, I know Felino can play all three positions. He's very comfortable on the off wing. He's played some center. I don't know about center for him if I want him there regularly. I don't know. I, I think I'd really prefer him on the wing. Yeah, um, not in this division. Right. So and if, I mean you have Charlie Coyle. I mean, he's gotta figure it out at center if if you know if we're if we're going that way, that third line center spot. Okay. Question then. You know, Brick and I did a free agent show on Nesson earlier in the evening. He, uh he was talking about maybe Howla taking a a third line center spot and putting you yeah. know Charlie on the wing. Um, and then who's on the right. left? DeBrusque? Yeah. Or Felino? Well, now it would be Felino. Yeah. Now it would be Felino. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I would have those three guys. I'd probably put, yeah. So you have those three guys on the third line. But you signed Charlie Coyle to be that third line center. <laughs> no. Yeah, he's making I understand. $5 million, But it right. changes. Yeah, but... I think it's an upgrade. I think Nosek watching him in the playoffs and, and he had an impact with Vegas. He seemed to be out there a lot. You know, you look at him and Lazar and, and Frederick on the fourth line, that seems to make sense to me. Mm-hmm. He's long. Yeah. He's, he's a big, good skater. He's, yeah. He is not physical though. No. 
and I'm I'm concerned with the lack of some lack of physical presence, Razor, with this team. I mean, you're you know, we you know to go through the litany of players no longer there. I thought they'd resign Tenorti. I did. I thought they re- I thought they would resign him as that seven guy. He got nine, I think, or nine and a quarter from the Rangers for two years. Yeah, one fight against Tom Wilson got him nine hundred for two years. <laughs> right, that's uh, legitimately what happened. Right. So I'm wondering if the Bruins didn't offer him a second year. Maybe that's maybe, but I okay. So no Richie, no Richie, no Tenorti, no Lausanne, no Miller, no Miller. No bueno. I mean, <laughs> that's that. That's a. Uh, uh, I know we don't need to see the old Rock'em Sock'em anymore. The once in a while fight's still going to happen, but, but, I'm I, I mean, you look at the teams that made it and the size of them and the physical presence is again. I go back to the playoff, even Tampa. Oh With no, the Tampa's, and the Tampa's D was huge. Huge, huge right? Huge. Right. So so does it concern you as much as it concerns me, or am I just spewing gobbledygook while I'm drinking my 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 nighttime beverage? Um no, I you've made me more concerned in the last three minutes. I I, oh, I had a thought that about wonderful. it up front. I, I was kind of <laughs> like, all right, they brought some new guys in. I I thought they were upgrades talent wise, skating wise, hockey wise. Fair enough. Um, all, all, but all maybe, agree. but but now, but now maybe there is a hole because, um, I mean, I guess you could look at Felino and as, Frederick, as, and Frederick. If if they're playing consistently, there's two guys there that are um, up for the challenge if need be, and, and can set tones and can, you know, they can keep some of the guys in place. Um, uh, yeah, no, I guess there, there isn't, about... there isn't that, there isn't that one guy. You're right. Well, and, not and, the and... one guy, but also just the wear, the, the, the wear down factor come playoff time. Mm-hmm. See, see, I, I think one of the things that's, that has to be taken into consideration is you don't want to be just built for the regular season. If this is, if the comment is they're really putting forward, a, you know, a team to give it one more kick at it with Bergeron and and Marchand. And, and, and I guess Krejci, and let's get into Krejci in a minute here because that's still a big what's going on. I mean, that's a huge – that creates a huge hole. I mean, if he's not there, not only are they not physically that deep, but now they're centers. Oh, yeah. All right. So – but I, I just think this team needs – Another presence, another player. I do, and I I can't imagine. I go back to my comment 15 minutes ago. I can't. I just don't think they're. I, I'm not saying they'll be able to pull it off, but I just don't know if they're done yet. Because no, I, I yeah, I don't think they are done. Um, and I don't think the and I think there will be some of those sandpaper guys available. And there were so many names thrown out there today. There's going to be guys that are dying for jobs for 750 and. Ones you can work into cap and, and find ways. Um, you know, you, you look at what they did in 19, and I know they didn't win. You, you look at that line of Nordstrom and yeah. Corrali and Wagner and what they brought. They brought well, an Achari energy. Was and I there, think, though, too. No, Achari and Achari. Yeah. yeah. So they, they they were a little physical, but they weren't they weren't beat up. They were just I, and I better skaters, uh, higher tempo more mm-hmm. of a motor and I think they they did some of that today. Um, yeah. I would listen, there's no question that Nosek and Haula in particular yeah. uh bring the elevated pace potential to the game. Yeah. Haula has been I'm I'm really curious to see what Eric Haula does. He's still young. I, I don't have, is he 29? I think um 30. He's 30 now. I remember doing Eric Howell's games at, at Minnesota. And interesting story there. His father uh, in Finland, an American football coach. a uh, coached a, <laughs> an American football team in Finland. I remember it well. And and Howell was a very uh, a dominant player in college. And he's come out. Um, he's a very confident kid. I, I remember that, too. Incredibly confident. Um, 
which is great. Uh, but he's also been now on six teams. So yeah. he has history with Charlie Coyle with uh, Minnesota. Um, uh, and even though he's finished, he, he's been around. Like, you know, he came and went in Shattuck St. Mary's, et cetera. He's been in North America for a long time. He had uh-huh. the one the one big year razor, uh, 50-something points, if I remember correctly. It was 55 points with, with uh, was it Vegas? His first year, yeah, in Vegas. Yeah, 55 points there in 76 games. Since then, now, granted, he's been suffering some injuries. Uh, Carolina, 1920, only 41 games. Last year, actually, I take it back, 48 games. Last year, he played 51 of the 56. He had 21 points. But, I mean, he's a good face-off guy, left-shot face-off guy. That helps. Um, but, again, are you thinking third or fourth line? Maybe the bottom six now just becomes one big line. That's what it is. And you just yeah. – and, and, and maybe that's – you know, we see the success of uh, – the we know the importance of the success with Tampa Bay with that Gord line, which, by the way, all three of those guys, Yanni yeah, Gord, Colin and Goodrow, <laughs> gone. Bye-bye. Uh, but I, I mean, you know, we know that good teams have two lines. Great teams have three lines. Championship teams have a fourth line that they can use. So yeah. I'm, I'm just curious to see where, where they, how they deploy this, uh, this, these, these, these guys. Um, and again, does, what about Stunika? We haven't even touched on that. Is this just a, you're going to well, go back to the American guys, right? league kid. Yeah, and yeah. I I think there's a there's a way to I think there's something to be said to build that organizational depth by allowing them to do that and not having you know this and this past year was a mess the the whole marble thing like it was just a mess like to get those guys back on track actually yeah. playing real hockey in front of real people traveling re- right way um, getting them into the rhythm of the season. I think you you need to give all of those young guys a couple months and you really hope that the summer worked for them. They yeah. got bigger, they got stronger, they get two months of confidence in the minors and, and then they can come up and really excel because this past year was so difficult to be able to do that. So so really they're two years removed now from actually playing real hockey at, at a high level. Uh-huh. I, so So, I mean, maybe there's this, that... That reality of hey guys, we're gonna move it maybe you up, you down, we up, you get get the American League thing going again. Yeah, um, and, and listen, I the think- organizations, all of them need these young guys to find ways to to figure it out. Right, somehow, some way to figure it out, and the Bruins will need these guys to do that at some point as well. Um, so let's just also touch on Felino just a, a little bit more. It's well documented. It was talked about how um, talked to Patrice Bergeron. He also has a real soft spot for the city of Boston due to uh, his baby girl uh, needing it, you know, significant attention due to a heart condition. Um, mm-hmm. And it was two years ago, I believe. And they spent, I remember it vividly sent he and his wife spent significant time here uh, as his, as his daughter got treatment. And he just, just said how amazing it is. And so that's, and by the way, that's part of selling your city. It is in, in these this sure. day in, in the National Hockey League and in all sports for that matter. So kudos to Boston and 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 from somebody on a I don't want to go on a tangent here, but from somebody who uh, needed the medical uh, you know uh, system here in town uh, in the last year and to see it work at its finest, um, it's awesome. It is. I always knew it was world renowned. We knew that. But I do think it's the best in the world for a big. It's yeah. just it's just amazing. So kudos to Boston and, and Massachusetts for that. Um, he's a leader. He's thirty four. Can he bring it enough? I don't know. I mean, he's he's a wonderful. You want to talk about a locker room guy? Oh, I mean, yeah. this is it. So now you're bringing a, literally another captain to this team uh, that doesn't need it, but it can never hurt. Um, I'm going to be curious to see what what Felino can bring. And I, I I can't imagine that he won't feel the good pressure of saying, holy smokes, you know, I was in a nice town in Columbus, very comfortable, and he was beloved there. But then he goes to Toronto and he experienced that frenzy, albeit without fans in the stands. But they only go that one round and they have that collapse. <laughs> and so and he actually yeah. doesn't play every game due to injury. 
But now, just like Taylor Hall, he's coming to one of the great hockey cities in North America. I think this will jack him up. Does that translate to big numbers? Numbers haven't been trending up, but I don't. I'm I'm, I'm curious to see if it makes him if if it gives him the juice to, to be that a little bit even more effective. It, yes, exactly. And that 34 feels old at this point. You, you know, he's got a lot of miles on that 34. He came out a junior. Yep. Uh, he's played a long time, a lot of games. But to your point, he is a he's a veteran guy. He is a captain. He's a leader. And and I, I like the Taylor Hall analogy where he's now doesn't have to be that guy. He doesn't have to go to all the the off ice things. He doesn't have to take guys out to dinner all the time. He can just yeah. be the guy. He can just be a teammate in there and not not take over and, and be that guy. And maybe that'll relieve some pressure and allow him just to go and play and not worry about what's going on with John Tortorella. What's going, you know, what guy he has to manage in the dressing room. He can just play hockey, yeah. have fun, go home to his family. And and that might be refreshing for him and and that might really help his game. Um he's gonna do all the right things. His intangibles are through the roof. It's just a matter of does he get to the spot quick enough still right. to be able to score and produce offensively? And can he and can he do it game in, game out? Can physically yeah. can he handle that grind? I mean, he Yeah, can he, he go into Toronto on Saturday on Friday night, come back on Saturday night, play in Tampa Bay in this right. division? Because again, that you know, that's that's a lot to ask. It is. And let's obviously they do their due diligence. I, I would assume that his injury that he had with Toronto has healed or is going to be uh-huh. fine. So I need that. So, so the big question now is this, let's look at the rest of the division quickly. And I know it's still just one day. And then there's more to come, but how much have the Bruins put themselves into a better spot, the same spot. Now, granted, we didn't see this division last year, just as a reminder, we had different divisions. So, in case anybody out there, and I don't think not one of our Morning Brew fans would not remember their division, but in case you haven't, you're talking the Florida teams, so Tampa and Florida and the Panthers. You're talking a couple in Tor- in uh, Canada, in Montreal, Toronto, and Ottawa. Uh, and then who am I forgetting? Right? Oh, the Buffaloes, the Detroit. Buffalo, Detroit. Yep. And... So are the Bruins in a better spot? If you go to, I mean, look, Tampa, Tampa's still good. Maybe not as good, but I still think they're good. Yeah. They have, listen, they have Hedman, Vasilevsky, Point, and Kucherov. So they'll figure and, it and out. I'm, and I'm a Palat fan. And yeah, I'm, looks like, I'm and, starting with yeah, those guys. Yeah. yeah. You were right, you know, Sergachev and right. McDonough. So I think, I, I think, I think they're still really good, really good. Yeah, Florida. Would you agree? Florida is much better. The fact they had to, they didn't have to do anything today makes them. They've gotten better by doing nothing at all, right? They, they signed Montour, but they didn't have. They, all their guys are there. Yes, yeah, so they're good. They're yeah, good. And, and you know they have Bennett and. You know, Reinhardt now. Reinhardt like now. Two days ago, yeah. They're Barkov. So, they're good. So They'll on have paper. Had coming back. Yes, exactly. Their one issue there is goaltending. Yeah. Their one issue is goaltending. What are you going to do? Bobrovsky or the kid Knight? Well, you split them. Maybe. Yeah, and, 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 that's, and the reality is that's really not that bad. Right, like yes, Bobrovsky's up and down, and he can he's been bad since he got to Florida. But the reality is, they have two those two guys. If you had them at the start of the year, you're saying, all right, we can figure this out, anyways. Okay, yeah, that's the way I I see that. The way I see it, though, bud, the only thing I would say that I disagree a little bit with, or I look at that that Bobrovsky scenario, and if the kid starts taking over, and Bobrovsky is there with the albatross of ten million dollars a year, yeah. I don't well, know. I mean, and that's, I guess that, that's the thing yeah. is it's his contract, right? That that tease that that makes it a problem is that that's ten million. But he seems to be happy not playing to, making ten million too. Maybe <laughs> which yeah. might be the problem. Which might be a problem too. Exactly. Yeah. But no, I I think that this is a really really good team. A team that on paper I would say right now is stronger than Boston. 
Yep. So I agree. now if, if, if you look at the other teams, let's go from the bottom up. Uh, Buffalo, oh, my God. I don't know what they're going to – They I don't mean, even have a goalie. No, they do. They do. They're calling you. I, they, I, I'm they. i good friends with Donnie <laughs> Granado. I said, call Ray Kroc. Uh, yeah. Listen, I'll yeah. be cheap. I'll be real cheap. <laughs> or they can pay me a lot and get to the, the floor. They're probably not even at the cap and anywhere near that cap floor. So, yeah, they're a disaster. Uh, okay. Whatever. You know, whatever. So you know you're above that. Yeah. I do think Detroit's better. I still they don't are. think they're there yet, but they're yeah. better. Stevie's be making his moves. He's right. making his moves. They'll be good in two years. They'll be very oh, good. Yeah. Um, Ottawa. I think that Ottawa is better than than maybe some give him credit for. At least I think DJ Smith gets through to his players yep. and gets the max out of them. I think the Bruins... Their goaltending problem is big. Yes. Yes. So if Matt Murray does not reinvent himself or whatever you want to call. Yeah. I, I think that would be the only thing. But otherwise, I see them giving some teams in this division issues with regard to their 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 high level of give a shit. I do. Because I yep. think they're going to say like us against the world type thing. Yeah. So I think that the Bruins are better, but watch out. The other team is Montreal. Without Weber, no Philip Deno. And Carey Price is he's not scheduled to start the season. Is, is he might not even play this year? Yeah. Right? Is that where we're at now with him? We know yeah, Weber's. Although done. Jake Allen's on a big step down. He really he's 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 good. But okay. but yes, that's obviously you don't have Carey Price, you don't have Carey Price. Well, so yeah, no, I think the Bruins are ahead of them. I think they're ahead of them. Yeah. So they're on that line again, bud. Did I forget anybody in the division? Well, we didn't touch I... on Toronto. Oh, Toronto. Sorry. That's what yeah, Toronto. So there, that's the team, duh, that the Bruins, I I mean, those. that's going to be a team that I think the Bruins are going to have significant battle with again for a playoff spot. Uh-huh. And I can't tell you, I think you and I disagree on, who, what, so what, they, they went out and got uh, Mrazek. What was it, a three-year deal? Two three-year year, three deal, year? 3.8. I know that he can get hot. I know it. Yeah. But do, does does so does Morazic is 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 Marazic and K- Jack Campbell better than Jack Campbell and Freddie Anderson? No, not in my opinion. Not in my okay. So we agree. So yeah. I, I wasn't trying to pick a fight. I thought. So, no, no, so, I'm not a I'm not a Marazic guy as much as I am an. An- I, I I liked Anderson. I I, don't, I didn't mind him, but. But I think Jack Campbell's due for a huge step back. I, I don't see how that that sticks. Um, so I think that I think they have issues back there, along with their back end. You talk about the Bruins, but right? The Leafs have Morgan Riley to deal with too. He's unrestricted, and at the end right. of this season, and and you know, like there's all kinds of issues up there. There really is. So so that they didn't get better on their back end either. Right, so that's the team I oh. think, though that, that they can still outscore you sometimes if they, if when they when they want it. So that to me is going to yeah. be interesting. Um, you know, they lost McCann. Yeah, so the four expansion. teams you got two: Florida, Boston, Tampa. Toronto. Yeah, that's a tough division. It is, it 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 is, but yet it, I don't think it's six deep. That's the only thing I think it's I think it's I think it's four deep. With a team like Montreal, who's yeah, and then Ottawa, who I think is I think look, we've seen Ottawa beat Boston a couple of times over the last few years. You're like, how the hell yeah. that happened? They seem no. to give them issues, but I think the Bruins are are are, have, are are in the mix. But I don't see them, I I don't see them battling for a division title. As is right now. Um. Obviously, things can change. Do do you think that Jake DeBrusque will be with this team opening night? <sighs> a week ago, I would a hundred percent no. Now I'm now I'm starting to to think that they're gonna give it a run. Okay. Uh, I, I, what are you gonna get for him now? I guess that's my that's my question. I thought they would have been able to get something whether it was a draft pick or a D-man or mm-hmm. open up space to get the D-man they wanted today. Mm-hmm. And now with all of those things off the board, what's the incentive now to trade Jake? That's my well, question. Well, 
I think the I think that answer would 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 be the uh, would be a defenseman if there was some type of thing they could do to to package DeBrusque and him. I I'm leaning towards him being there too now. However, I still look at that bottom six and I'm like, where? Yeah, he it doesn't fit right. The left side doesn't fit. Somebody doesn't fit. I don't yeah. know if it's even him. Somebody. Uh, somebody doesn't fit right there. Um, all right. So anything else from the world of free agency that made you go awesome or crazy? Like uh, to me, the, one of the biggest things was Grubauer to Seattle, the goalie from the Colorado avalanche Mm -hmm. signing for a hair under 6 million. I don't know what Colorado offered him to stay if they even did when it was all said and done, but you're going from a team that is right on the precipice of making it to a Stanley Cup to now to a team that I think will be good, but – and then you get the Darcy Kemper move to getting him to the Colorado Avalanche. I mean, that is – is Kemper as good as Grubauer? I think that's an upgrade, actually. And okay. I know the year Grubauer just had, but I, I think that ends up being an upgrade – Darcy Kemper had an off year last year, but I think his upside's higher than Grubauer. I think that's a good move for Colorado. Uh, they lost a bunch of guys, though, too. Um, you know, the, 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 the problem with success and the salary cap is, like we talked about with Tampa, the same thing. But, but yeah, and, and uh, you know, obviously Grubauer has to chase the check. He's got one chance to, mm-hmm. to really make hay, but but to, to, to leave that team, to go to Seattle, which – None of it makes sense to me. What what's going on there? I, it, it you know to to spend the money on that guy, but already have Dreger and and it just none of that really makes sense. But um, right. um, but you know for Grubauer's sake, he, he's he's all set now. So he is set. I mean, it wasn't like I don't think he was hurting before, um, but. Now he make you know what he's he's making well he's making marks for money basically right yeah that that yeah. that that's six million. Um, uh, Flurry getting traded that's a big one that was you know that's that's crazy him going to Chicago. Do you think he ends up playing there? Yeah, I, I think it's hard to leave seven million on the table, no matter how much you've done or what you've done. I think a couple of years from now you'll regret doing that, and, and you know we know how much he how much he's loved and how much people love him. I think he, he wants to play. He has fun playing. You see that on a nightly basis. And I think they'll be able to talk him into going there. It's a pretty good place to be still, as you know. (laughs) Yeah. Well, it is. I mean, I'm, I'm not convinced. I, boy, I hated that Seth Jones contract. I hated it. As much as Dougie Hamilton. Um, no, I, I think it's, it's close. Really, that huh? Dougie Hamilton deal, oh my, oh. I, I, I don't get it. I yeah. don't. I don't know how you built around that. He's your number one guy now. He is. I know that PK Subban makes more than what does PK have one year left? Is that what it is? I think. I but, for but, for New Jersey's sake, I hope it's one. Yeah, but you you got a guy in Dougie that, you know, he's got some great qualities to his game. Um, but is he the guy that is he your beast on the back end that you build around? I don't think he is when it's all said. I think he's your comp your 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 top end complimentary guy. Seth Jones, I, I get it, but I mean, holy smokes, nine and a half mil. To me, that's a <laughs> that's a that's a general manager that just knows that he's on the hot seat. Yeah, he's like, I'm not gonna have to see the end of this. He's just throwing it out there. Just yeah. just throwing it out there. Um yeah, so that was interesting. I do think that Flurry ends up playing there unless somebody comes to the Hawks and makes an offer like a Pittsburgh that they can't refuse to bring him in there. Yeah. Um, so I, I let's you know let, I guess let's 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 wrap it um, in conclusion. This. Yes, in <laughs> conclusion. Well, inconclusive. It, it is. It's it's not incomplete. It's just I'm just curious how this is all going to fit. Let's get to the Krejci situation. Okay. Hmm. Is, is this, we really don't know, at least I don't know what's going on. Meaning, you know, somebody told me 
uh, or there was a report two days ago. Yeah, you know, everything's close. You hear it's close. I asked somebody, whatever, you know, that I, I think knows. And uh, he's like, yeah, I don't know where that came from. Okay, fine. Now, that doesn't mean things can't change quickly here or there. But, I mean, don't you think that, don't you think, I mean, so, did the Bruins really not know going in to free agency if he was going to come back or not? I understand Donnie Sweeney, and I don't have the exact comment he made about Krejci in the in the presser on uh, on Wednesday night, but it was basically, you know, we're going to respect David. He's earned it. He, the, the right to do, you know, to make this decision. And I love respect. I do. I'm a huge respect guy. I love it. And I, and I do think the Bruins are very respectful, but that's too important of a position raiser to not know. I mean, doesn't yeah, well, David I, also, he doesn't, he owe them something too. Yeah. I always, I always defer to the, the that they know more than they're going to let on. So, you know, and maybe that's where that Felino thing came in. Um, or, or the opposite is, you know, listen, let's, we've got this in place. You don't, we don't need you to sign this now. This is what we're going to do. We have to, let's get through the, maybe there's a few guys that we want to get that we need to sign and then we'll figure out the money to get you where we need you to, you know, where you need to be, where we need to be. And and this is the number we're going to get around that, but just give us a couple more months. We know you, you're not going anywhere. We know you're not going anywhere. Um, we want you here. We're not going to, you're coming here. Um, those kinds of scenarios, those kinds of conversations, or it's the exact opposite and, and that's it. So there, yeah. there's certainly stuff going on and, and I'm not privy to any of it. I don't know. I don't know David well enough. I don't know his agent. I don't know. Yeah. Then and, and no one's going to say anything, but I just, I, I feel like it's certainly, I never assume that no one knows nothing. I, I get it. I get it. I, I, you know, I'd make maybe probably a crappy GM because I think I would be at this point where I would say, we need to know. And it's not that we don't love you. It's not that we don't, we, we don't respect you for taking the extra time. It's not that we, we don't get it, but you know, there's a pretty significant moves made uh, on the day of free agency. Was it nine moves or signings? I think if you add in the, the two way and one way deals that the Bruins made. And I just think it's such an important level of important position for this team, because they are very different. If they don't re-sign David Krejci, they're going to be very There's different. No question. I mean, no, it's no question about that, at the, especially at this point, you know, was there anybody at David Krejci's level or, you know, on, on the board? I don't think so. So that also changed, you know, did it really matter whether they whether they sign them or not at this point? You know, if if they know they're kind of close or they know what the number is and how to get to that number, because mm -hmm. there if, if David said no, I'm not playing. Who are they going to get anyways? Do and, they? And I that, don't know. That's another I, hour and a half show, but right, um, right. You know, I think they're in a spot where they kind of need them too. Yeah, I, I think so as well, and I think a one year deal is perfect for both sides. Hey, come in. We talked about it on our last morning brew. Come in, play great, get to a thousand games in the Bruins sweater. Let's see what happens. And then we worry about next year, next year. Um, I don't see yeah. Charlie Coyle elevating to that second line center spot. I don't right now. I I I, I don't. So um it is just eh, it'll be curious. Look, I, I'm gonna root for Charlie Coyle as much as anybody. Uh, but you know. He's got a big yeah. step up after last year. No question. No, no question. question. So, so um, yeah, it's uh, it was a fun day. Lots of action. I think they solidified they solidified in goal. Anyways, that was the that was yeah. where I was looking at. I think they did that in a in a very positive way, and then they did a really good job on the bottom six. And then we start hoping, expecting, assuming that there's still a little bit more to go here uh, in the next month. Well, I agree. And I hope that this concoction, that's the word I was looking for, concoction. That's what kids, when they learned concoction, yes. that's what, you All know. The, like, let's make a concoction. Right, let's make yes. a concoction, right. I hope that this concoction is what uh, they want it to be, need it to be, 
but I'm not sure yet. And um, I go back to where does everybody fit? Are they physical enough? And are they built? Yes, they have more players, but is it depth, the good depth players that you need to be successful, especially come playoff time? Rhetorically asking, I don't know yet. We still have a ways to go. The regular season for the Boston Bruins does not begin until October 16th. Um, by the way, and this is, I think it's just also worth pointing out, Razor, there's also some deals that the Bruins were in on, like a Blake Coleman at five times five. And like Orion Suter, I think they were offering two. Maybe they they got to the three year, but two I, for sure that they balked on. You know, Calgary came in and swooped in and said, "We'll give you another year." Well, you know what? I like Blake Coleman, but not for six years. No. <laughs> oh no. my God, that's gonna hurt. No. And then Dan, oh, and that, there was some bad. There were some bad deals out there. There were some really bad deals. There and, were, and so the and, Bruins, and what they always said that. What's the saying? You'll know the saying is that, you know, some of the best deals are the ones you don't do on July 1st. Right. 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 So let's, you know, I'm not trying to find the positive. I'm saying there is that in that the, the, the term, the biggest term was four years. And that's for a goalie who's 27, who I think, you know, he, he, you know, people I talk to in Buffalo, first, they say he's a great kid. And second of all, they say they think he has real viable number one, Quality yeah, to him. He's going to so, be good. I like it. Um, all right. How's everything else with you? We'll uh, give the fans what they want for a couple of minutes. Let's, what's going on in Razor World? Is is the Razor sharp or is he dull right now? Razors, Razors had a, a pretty dull 10 days. It's been nice. My, my mom was in town, so that was amazing. And mm-hmm. now this week's just been kind of chill. Next week, the same. And then um we get to go to canada april or august 9th we can now go back without quarantining so um we're just gearing up for that but all's good kids are in camps and etc so are you gonna go back right away or are you guys gonna just try and work it out at another like later in the month like and and, um how will you 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 will drive right you'll we drive drive. yeah we'll drive for sure so we'll have the whole crew and everything else but yeah we're gonna go as soon as possible Uh, is gonna probably work better dates wise school starts soon too i mean i can't i can't wait for school to start (laughs) can't wait it start yes can't wait oh good all right um what's going on at the jaffe house we got plays and jake jake is still at camp man coming back yeah. He's coming back uh, August 7th um, and uh, doing good, doing well. Julia had her play, and uh, I found out I need surgery. Um, I found oh, out. Oh, that, that's uh, right, the shoulder. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, it's, boy, uh, when are you going under the knife? I don't know yet, uh, but I have a tear and uh, in, the, in the rotator, and I've got a uh, – the bicep tendon is off its track a bit. Uh, it's not oh, out, boy. but it's kind of in and out. Um, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. I might just start doing a lot of edibles and just seeing if I can, <laughs> if I can just get make by. it go back in place with those, or at, at least not not tell that it's out. Um, I am thoroughly despaired, despondent over it. In fact, I was with our boy RC. When uh, the doctor called on on Saturday after reading my MRI, and you know it was actually the the, the doc's uh, assistant, and he says, "Yeah, this is this, this, and this." So basically, um, you're gonna need surgery. I'm like, okay, <laughs> shit. Um, so that's fun. I I'm guessing early September. I'm gonna be like, you know, I you know one of the things that really bothers me the most is that if if I do get it to go through with it. The rehab is what sucks. The recovery oh, yeah. sucks. Um, so I'm not going to be able to go on the ice for a while as even as a coach. So, so I'm going to be are, like the kids have been doing cartwheels. Then have you told everybody yet? Or no, no this, is, this is it right here. Basically, I'm telling, <laughs> but, but I'm going to be like that. Remember the old movie with uh, yeah. uh, not the old movie, but Miracle with the Russian coach in front of the bench. His, oh, I'm going to be on the bench Just yelling at them. The from yeah. practices, yes, in practice. <laughs> it's gonna yell at him with my arm in a sling. It's so, so good. Yes. Uh, so that was uh, that's it. Uh, otherwise, fine. Getting stuff 
trying to get stuff done at the house. It's crazy. Life is crazy. It's all around. I can't tell you I have felt relaxed yet. I'm not good at shutting things off. I need to. Um, I'm glad that we could do this long show here. We get you an hour show of Morning Brew at Jaffe and Razor. Um, and uh, by the way, uh, still a few spots left for the adult camp over at Warrior. Let's not forget that August uh, 16th through 20th. So that's looking great. There's the women's camp August 13th through 15th. You, what's your what's your deal with your your goalie stuff? How's that? Sixth to ninth August. So okay. 10 days, one week, basically. Yeah, that's right. All right. And I will be doing tips, one handed tips when I'm there. Yes. And pass, yeah. No, and, no. And passing. I, my insurance can't cover that shoulder. No way. You're oh, going no. Out on Listen, the ice. No, no way. No, Jose. No, 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 there's you have nothing to worry about. This isn't post surgery. <laughs> this is pre. I mean, this, <laughs> no, you're so actually you really bugger it up. You're fine right now. I'll just be doing tips. That's what yeah, I'll that's be doing right. it and making passes there. All right. <laughs> so go to warrioriceArena.com to check out Razor's Camp uh, for goalies, which is fantastic. And uh, check out my adult camps that we have there. That's going to wrap it up. Uh, it was good to see RC the other day. The man, the myth, the legend. Some good things cooking for the big boy there. He's working his ass off and doing this for us. And so we thank him for that. For Razor. You have a wonderful, well, I would say have a wonderful day or two, but I guess my guess is we're not going to talk to you for a couple of weeks. Who knows? You never know. We might pop up with another morning uh, brew with Jaffe and Razor. I want everybody to have a wonderful day. I hope you enjoyed Free Agent Frenzy. Uh, hang in there, folks. I still think a little bit more is coming with your uh, your your Boston Bruin. Just a little more. Not exactly sure what it is. But uh, when it's all said and done, let's hope that they've gotten themselves into a better spot. All right, that's going to wrap it up. Enjoy the show, and as always, enjoy that coffee.